so great to be with you this morning on this day right after some furry rodents were emerging from ceremonial burrows <laughs> in towns all over the northern hemisphere <clears throat> leading otherwise rational people to make crazy predictions <laughs> about the severity of the remaining weeks of winter <laughs> predictions that Scientists have studied and said they're only correct less than 40% of the time, but still. Fox <laughs> Tawani Phil of Pennsylvania and Sir Walter Wally of North Carolina and, and many other groundhogs were watched closely on this past February 2nd by people having great hopes that these small animals would get us off the hook of any late winter snow. You know, didn't you kind of wish that too on February 2nd? It's, it's silly, right? But here we are in modern times still celebrating these things that go way back into our Celtic ancestry. <laughs> Halfway point of winter was a really important point to humans all through time in the Northern Hemisphere. It's called Imbolc, or the Feast of Bridget, and later, uh, you know, Bridget was scooped up into Christianity and it was called Candlemas, which was a celebration of St. Bridget as the Virgin Mary who conveniently replaces so many of the pagan goddesses. <laughs> In ancient times, celebrations of humanity were always closely linked to the cycles of the earth and nature and what was going on inside of the human psyche in relation to that. You know, the other day we were driving out past the fields and it was so cute to see all the little baby cows running after their moms, right? And uh, that was beginning to happen in Ireland around this time of year, too. And so, imbolc, that word that sounds so strange to us, actually comes from the word omlek, which means the ewes or the cow's milk. So, imbolc is about uh, both the uh, emerging possibility of spring that we might see with the groundhog, but uh, they also had the, the theory that when a bear was emerging from hibernation, or a snake was starting to come out of the ground, that maybe that would be a similar sign to what folks of Twani Phil is giving us. So I think it's better to have Phil, the groundhog, than snakes or bears coming out of the ground, so I'll go with Phil. Um, so, you know, Celtic peoples, that's, that's in a lot of our roots, and Celtic, it's not just Ireland, but it spreads throughout all of Europe, all the way over to Russia. You know, Celtic mythology is very ancient, and it's in most all of us who have ancestry in the Northern Hemisphere. And Bridget, it's said that the goddess Bridget is probably older than uh, just Celtic mythology, because she, the, for example, Stonehenge rocks are called the Bridget Stones or the Bride Stones, and they date back further than that, earlier than 5,000 years, some of these ancient ruins are pointing to the fact that there was a mother goddess who was known all over the place and was revered and uh, looked at as someone that could help us with these changes that we always go through between times of light and perceived light and darkness and perceived darkness, through times of the masculine being in charge or the feminine being in charge, through times when the warrior is at the forefront or the healer. So the goddess Bridget has all of this within her. They call her the goddess of all, of all the world. I think it's important that we look at Bridget today because of the times that we're living in, don't you? So I'd like you to join me in an invocational prayer right now that we can come into the presence because you know we're just humans here, sitting here, but we have the presence within us, the presence all around us, so it's important that we pause to invoke and realize that there's more than just us here. So pull your attention inward and close your eyes for a moment. Take a deep breath. Yes. Feel yourself settling into your chair there, relaxing. And we come into this hour that we have together, this precious hour, 
invoking this divine presence that is always radiating its being and presence everywhere, perpetually, perennially. And along with this invocation, that we might give ourselves over to be of service to the Spirit, we realize that we are being served by this greater presence all the time. All the time, she is calling to us to bring our minds, our hearts into harmony. So right now, we ask you, Spirit, Great Mystery, Spirit of Bridget, to come and be with us. Come and be with us right now. Let us feel your love, your beauty, your joy. Yes, deep, deep breath. Let's orient ourselves to the feelings of love, the feelings of beauty all around us, the vibrational frequency of thanksgiving, that come what may, we can anchor right here and right now, heaven on earth. So we bless whatever pain or mess that we just came from or that we find ourselves in, and we let it roll off of us right now. And we proclaim that somehow, some way, good is appearing. And we're aligning with that good right now in this hour. And we give thanks for the great unfolding of more good to come. Because it is happening. It is happening. Can you say amen with me? Amen. amen. This song that uh, the musicians are going to bring us right now to our bones. Heather, just say a, a word about the song. It's one of my favorites that we do. We really use it as an invocation. So I uh, heard this at a gathering. People were singing it in the kitchen. We were kind of working in the kitchen together. And I thought, oh, what is that song? I have to learn it because just really goes through your bones when you hear it. A lot of you have sung it here and elsewhere with me. Um, I don't know where it came from. It's called To My Bones. And the verses go through the elements. To my bones, take this water, rain down on me. To my bones, take the spirit, teach me to walk in peace. To my bones, take this earth, grow your roots in me. To my bones, take this fire, fan your flames in me. Those are the words. And I invite you to stand and sing with me as we invoke the, the presence a little um, more into our bodies through, through this song.
remain standing if you will. Oh. This is a U stick brought by Ruthann. Um, did it actually come from Ireland? But it's, it's a U stick of, of U wood and it has this V in it. Um, this is the wand of the ancient goddess. She's also brought us the star of Bridget uh, made out of woven, out of reeds, that is a symbol of Bridget, and actual uh, candle that was lit in Kildare in Ireland at uh, Bridget's site there. So we honor the altar, the beautiful altar, and we have pictures of Bridget, both in her goddess and her Christian saint form. And just want to join together honoring the four elements like we do many times but to know that all four of these elements are gathered together in Bridget. Lots of times a god or a goddess will represent one of the directions or one of the elements but Bridget gathers all of them into herself. So we turn first to the east and you can raise your hands if you want and take a deep breath and feel yourself grounded and yet rising up we welcome you spirit of the east where the eagle flies high and brings us a perspicacity, a viewpoint that's higher than our own, so that we can see in a way that we need to see, especially in these times. Come to us now, great powers of the East. The eagle, come, be with us now. Amen. Let's turn to the South. <laughs> great spirit of the South, fire, passion. Seeing from a child's mind and allowing our original creativity, our essence selves, to be ignited, to fan those flames again of our creativity. This is what we pray. Come and be with us today. Fan those flames. Help us to feel it in our hearts. Aho. Aho. Be with us now. Now we turn to the West. Great mystery, spirit of the West, we Honor the waters, the waters all over the earth, the waters at Standing Rock, the waters in the ocean, the waters flowing here in Ashland, the, the streams and the springs, and the rain coming down, all of the waters of the earth. You are so precious to us, we cannot live without you. Please take us into a mindset and a heart set that knows how to protect you, waters of the earth. Help us to be of one mind with the whales and the dolphins and the great sea creatures that can teach us so many things, new ways of communicating. Come and be with us now, powers of the West. Aho. Aho. And now we turn to the north, and you can spread your legs apart a little bit and feel your stance like a great mountain. As we call on you, spirit of the north, we picture the great mountains that are around us with the snow caps, ancient, here for ageless times, much longer than our human selves, humans have been here. You've seen it all, coming and going, the great cycles of time. You give us a sturdy confidence that all will be well. We welcome you. Great powers of the north, come and be with us now. Aho. Aho. And then turn toward the center here. And with your hands on your own heart now. I welcome you here. You axis Monday between heaven and earth. You very important being alive on planet earth right now. You who hold so much potential for what the earth needs right now. I welcome you. Come, bring yourself present here. Settle in, relax, breathe, take a deep breath. Feel yourself grounded. Yes, so good to be here. Turn to one another now and, and just give each other a hug or a handshake and tell each other your name.
Blessed woman of the eternal flame, beneath your blue mantle we gather. Mother of our mothers, guide our hands in yours. Remind us how to kindle the hearth, to keep it bright, and to preserve the flame. O oh, wise woman of the fires, woman of poetry, woman of healing, guide our hearts and guide our hands. Teach us to bear the fires of transformation, the furnace that tempers our blades and makes us strong. Be with us as we blaze our trails. O oh, Bridget, goddess of the eternal flame, burn deep into the well of our being. Kindle your flame in our heads, hearts, and loins that we may heal, inspire, and transform. O oh, blessed woman of the flame, awaken us. Awaken us. It's a good prayer to pray to Bridget, isn't it, right now? Awaken us. The blessed woman of the flame. It's interesting that uh, we're in the year, Chinese New Year's wise, of the Red Rooster. It's about the flame of passion and um, you know how the rooster calls out in the early morning hours betwixt and between time, between the night and the dark. And it's said that the rooster is the, the one that is distinguishing between the night passing and the light coming. And it knows when the right moment is to, to call out, awaken. Awaken. So here we are in the year of this spiritual energy calling out to us, awaken, awaken. And how appropriate too that uh, in the beginning of this year, this ancient celebration of Bridget, uh, Bridget, the bride, she's also the one who's all about the flame of passion, our deepest passions calling us to awaken to come to ourselves. So I want to talk to you in detail a little bit about Bridget. Maybe you know quite a bit about her. Maybe you've even been to Kildare in Ireland and been close to that ancient sacred flame. But I, I want to talk to you about her because I want to help you to feel into this ancient power that's here on planet Earth that the scientists know about in the mitochondria of ourselves that all religions know about because they all honor the flame. 
there's something really important that we need to know about Bridget. So let me tell you some things that I found out about her. She is the daughter of the morning, it said. She held sunrise in one hand as a little yellow flame, and in the other hand, a red flower. Sunrise, a red flower. And it said that when she stood and held these dual flames, it called humanity out of a lower state of consciousness. And the way they said it in the ancient text was, without these two flames, men would be beasts who live in caves and holes. <laughs> so I don't want to downgrade the animals, but they were trying to get at something there. That, you know, that something was awakened that called humans into being human. <clears throat> She is the one whom the bards and singers revered as the mistress of their craft. <clears throat> she whose breath was a flame and that flame was a song. Those of you who love singing can relate to this. When, when you sing, something gets ignited inside of you. We, we were blessed to hear Pia singing last night. and oh. She's been here with us many times, you know, and to hear her voice, to hear Heather's voice, voices of really good singers ignite a passion in us too. She herself and no other is the ancient goddess whom our ancestors saw lighting the torches of sunrise on the brown hills, thrusting the quenchless flame above the horizon of the dark sea, whom the Druids hailed with hymns at the turn of the year when in the season we call February the first corners of the advancing spring were seen. Bridget has lots of ways that we can talk about her. Many names, too, but one of the interesting ones I found out about in this research is she's called the two-faced one. Two-faced. Like, we think of that as not a good thing, being two-faced. <laughs> but they're saying about her that she is um, both the light and the beautiful, the maiden, and the crone, the black, the ugly, the other. Um, I believe that this points to a more ancient perspective on this Bridget goddess, that she's not only the one who is the maiden beckoning the spring coming, but she is also the goddess of the winter. She's, in other words, the goddess of the entire year. You know, the ancient Celts only talked about two seasons. I don't know if you know that. They have the eight uh, holidays, but there's two seasons, winter and summer. And they're saying that the goddess Bridget is the goddess of, of it all, of all the seasons. Um, she is called the bride. And we talk about the return of the bride in many traditions. And somehow that relates in a weird way to the groundhog. <laughs> I don't know, it's weird. But somehow the return of the groundhog and the return of the bride. I haven't quite understood all that yet. <laughs> Another way that Bridget is two-faced, though, is she's the goddess of the sun. In Celtic mythology, the sun was feminine, and the light emanating out of it was masculine. So she was the goddess of the sun and of the moon. So she pulls all the pieces together. She holds the complexity long enough, like I always quote Jung as saying, without coming to premature foreclosure, so that we can come into our maturity. So, Bridget, I think she's a really good goddess for these times, don't you? Mm -hmm. To help us to hold the complexity of these times that we're going through. Her name, Bridget, Bridget they say is related to the Sanskrit word, Rati, and its original meaning was most exalted one. Most exalted one. So somehow in her ability to hold the dualism of it all, she's most exalted one. She's the daughter of the mythic peoples of planet Earth that came to Ireland, it was said, called the Dagada. Have you heard about them? Very ancient. Um, Prehistoric in a sense of pre-any writing. But the legend says that she was born with the sunrise. And as she elevated into her body, she elevated into the sky, and the rays of light were pouring out of her head. She was then nourished as a babe on the milk of the sacred cow. And it's said that wherever she walks, flowers and shamrocks sprout up in her footsteps. 
She has the apple orchard in the other world. You know, the mists of Avalon tell us that there's the apple orchard on the Isle of Avalon. Well, Bridget is the keeper of the apple orchard. And her sacred bees travel back and forth between this world and that world, carrying this magical nectar to us here on Earth. So there's evidence that um, Bridget is really ancient, really ancient. Um, I went to Ireland a few years ago. How many of you have been to Ireland? Did you go to the, the Kildare spot where the flame of Bridget is? How many have been there? I didn't get to go there either. I went to Newgrange and some other sites. But that, that place in Ireland is where an ancient oak tree stood. I wonder if it's still there. I don't know. Is it there from ancient, ancient times in Kildare? I'd love to see if this ancient oak tree is still there. It said that it was an ancient time surrounded by a thick hedge which no man could cross if he wanted to keep his health, his sanity, or his life intact. <laughs> because inside of that hedge was where the 19 priestesses of the goddess Bridget dwelt, and they held the sacred ancient wisdom, and they held justice in place, it was said. They created the justice of the, the land, which meant that no woman could be impregnated against her will, that no rapes could take place, that uh, there was a, a moral code that involved at its core honoring the sacred feminine in the masculine and the feminine, and that that sovereign sacred feminine was what would rule the land. Wow. Hey, we need Bridget, don't you think? <laughs> this eternal flame that was lit was tended for many hundreds, perhaps thousands of years by these 19 priestesses in perpetuity, and even when Bridget became a nun, <laughs> um, 19 nuns were there tending the sacred flame for a millennium. Bridget's sacred number is 19, and so these 19 priestesses, it said, would tend the fire, each for a single day in rotation, and then on the 20th day, it was said that the goddess, the presence herself, would be there tending the flame. So there's something about a discipline of tending the, fl the flame that leads through to a repetitive cycle of a growing presence. You know? This continued without interruption until 1220, when a bishop took offense to the ban of men from this sacred well area and sent the men across the great hedge and raped the high priestess. And the flame was extinguished. The Dark Ages ensued. <laughs> but it was relit and sustained again until the 1500s. And then it was put out again. Her holy flame was relit in 1993 mm -hmm. by the Daughters of the Flame, a Druid priestess, priestess modern sect. And now it burns once again since 1993. The Celtic goddess of flame, of flame. She's also the goddess of the sacred waters. So again, this two, these two parts to her, the flame and the waters, the sun and the moon. This is a quote from a man named William Sharp who wrote it in 1865. Don't you recognize me? talking about the ancient flame. He was standing before it in Kildare. I think this called out to him. Don't you recognize me? I am older than the St. Bridget of the church. I put songs and music on the wind before ever the bells of chapels were rung in the west or heard in the east. And I have been a breath in your heart. And the day is afoot that you will see me coming into the hearts of men and women like a flame upon dry grass, like a flame of wind in a great wood. Isn't that great? I, I just feel it for our times. Don't you? And the day is afoot that you will see me coming in the hearts of men and women alike, a flame upon dry grass like a flame of wind in a great wood. Just to apply some of this briefly to our lives right now, 
in dark times, in the times when the flames are being put out, when the rules are being changed and the hedges are being crossed, the walls are being put up, and things are going awry from what the ancient pattern of harmony is all about. Bridget tells us it's a time that we've got to cultivate our inner creativity more than ever. That there's a creativity that, even in the best of us, has, has still been squelched. There's a calling that's, that's deeper than deep that we have yet to really fully answer. And the Celtic people knew it so many years ago. It was alive in them, ancient times, and it's alive in us, both men and women. And we would be at a loss, maybe, if somebody asked us, man or woman, is the maiden Bridget alive in you right now? On February 2nd, did she appear? Did the maiden Bridget appear in your heart? We'd probably laugh and dismiss the idea and think of, oh, a lovely woman goddess, I wish. Oh, how I wish, you know, that was me. But, or that I was relating to her, but, you know, sometimes our society, though, know, frames young women as the weaker sex, needing more defenses from the external vulgarities of this world, and maybe even from young men. So why would any of us be willing to claim this vulnerability as a piece of ourselves? But that's what we've got to do now, all of us. Each of us, within us, has this brew of possibilities happening, these, these new beginnings, these undeveloped potentials that when we dismiss the maiden, we dismiss those parts of ourselves that, that are ever awakening and deeply knowing and growing towards deeper change, deeper hope, greater vitality, and the maiden spirit of, of rebirth and renewal. When you think about it, um, those of us who are no longer young, sometimes we're we feel kind of weighted down with the responsibilities of mature adulthood or the limitations of, of advanced years and how we feel. Can we recognize the maiden in us? She's there. You can look into the eyes of a 80-something grandmother who has mailed a letter to her grandchild who's just entering college, and you can see the maiden in her. You can look into the eyes of a man in his 30s who just left a high-stress job to follow his bliss, and you can see the maiden in him. Or you can see the maiden's glow in the eyes of a couple who's celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary. Or a 50-something woman who just had her very first art show. But you know, sometimes we can notice the absence of the maiden more than her presence. It's in the eyes of those who, no matter what age, have lost hope. They've stopped growing and changing. They're trapped, frozen, frozen beneath the ground with their fears, unable to reach the light, unable to feel the flame. Because you see, joy, it takes hard work. And change involves risk and faith in a tomorrow that we can't predict. Relationships take great effort and commitment. Careers need to be cultivated, and art demands an intensity of focus. When we stand at the beginning of a new path, we don't know what will happen, but we hope. And we feel this flame of Bridget stirring deep within us. When new paths are taken, there is a joy. There's a joy that we may have forgotten about that is getting ignited. It's as if Bridget is glowing, fanning this flame that's maybe in an ember in our hearts igniting the maiden in us again. The maiden is dressed in white as Bridget. So she is both the maiden dressed in white and the shadow, the shadow stuff that's deep within us. She is this two-faced goddess of spring and winter. So in that, she's reminding us right, that in order to have a rebirth, we know this, you hear me talk about this so much, much but we have to welcome the shadow's presence. When we change, when we're open to change, this is what's required. Like you always hear me say both the via positiva and the via negativa. So what is happening right now in our nation is the calling. 
as it is, just as it is, the via positiva and the via negativa, and we welcome it all. And there might be grief involved because we're losing something when we enter into a new calling. In fact, I think we're losing our identity as it has been as a nation. We're having an identity deconstruction, don't you think? It's been long awaited, and you know, it's been like we all are saying, it's been desired by the red and the blue alike. You know, this deconstruction is a calling that's more than just on liberal people's hearts. It's a calling that's going forth. Let it be that it's a, a calling to the growth of all of us. And that it's not easy because we all, on all sides, have got to let go of some things. And we feel the pangs of this, oh, you know, this entry into a great identity shift. The pull of the maiden. It's no longer the push of the crone through winter that we're entering into now. In this February month, we're leaving the push that's been, mm, like, been activating everybody. Think about this. We're leaving the push and we're entering the pull. Pain pushes, but vision pulls. Pain pushes, but vision pulls. Soft and sure, imperceptible at first, the maiden's vision is going to be compelling us into exploring new beginnings. The maiden's vision in you is going to be pulling you, pulling you, easily pulling you, pulling all of us through the frozen ground, shooting up, being vulnerable, breathing in this fresh air, letting the light come towards us. And we might actually feel that the process is enjoyable that we're entering into now. Enjoyable. To run towards something that we desire rather than running from something that we fear. To let the pain subside and allow the vision to pull us now. Because you know that new thought phrase you've heard so often, what we resist persists. What we resist persists. That really is a message for this time that we're living in, don't you think? What we resist. One regret many of us are having is that we didn't run toward the future that we were envisioning sooner. That we didn't rally and march and do all of these things a few months earlier. But I've been speaking with a growing number of people that have the awareness that we are being beseeched right now to not resist. Even though you might hear that in the, the lyrics of people that are singing out at the marches, we will resist the Trump agenda, you know, I think there's a better way to say it and a better way to be it because what we resist will persist. We really have to practice making it all the way in our thoughts and in our words to a non-dualistic place and it's hard for all of us to do that. It's hard for me to get there. I, I easily fall into the resistance language. But I think about Jesus, who was a great revolutionary teacher, and he warned people, resist not evil. And in the Sermon on the Mount, there was this point where he was saying, if the Romans ask you to go for a mile with them, go too. If they ask to have your cloak, give them your other uh, cloaks or clothing too. You know, resist not. And I think what he was getting at is that the occupying Romans were, you know, so hated by the people that the people were projecting a lot on them. I'm sure the Romans were projecting a lot on the Hebrew people, and they didn't know each other. And so by taking a walk with a Roman who's asking you to carry his stuff for a mile, rather than resisting it, you're going to have a conversation. You're going to get to know them. They're going to get to know you. How can we do this? How can we take a walk for a while? <clears throat> with people with a different perspective. Maybe we have to take on something. I don't know what that will be. Maybe we have to take on going to Medford and being in service there more often where there's more reds, you know. So let's not make it our goal to resist anything. Let's not say I will take the next four years resisting the president. Don't do it. Don't take all your time and your energy and your mind to resist. Like attracts like. Like attracts like. Like attracts like. So we've got to really be 
letting the flame of creativity help us to envision a gift that's coming to us that will attract everything that we want. You've heard me say that phrase, why pray when you can worry? <laughs> but really, it's why worry when you can pray? Because worrying, worrying is a form of praying that we often do, right? We are often worrying as if we are praying for that thing that we're worrying about. Wow, we're, you know, we're mixed up a little bit there. <laughs> it's a far better, more peaceful approach to not worry, to offer no resistance, to acknowledge what is here, and actually even maybe roll out the red carpet to welcome it. Well, what does that mean? Rather than looking at what is wrong, we've got to be attentive to our commentaries about what's going on in our experience. There's really not a need to fix or change anything. That's not really it. I know that sounds radical, but there's a deeper creativity. There's a deeper creativity than fixing, you know, in our social worky way. There's a deeper creativity that's calling us. Negative states persist because we give them energy and importance through how we give attention to them. If we're not going to be offering resistance anymore, maybe, just maybe, the shadow will wobble and fall away. And even if it does remain, that's okay too, because it just means we've got more shadow study to do. So don't make our lives, let's not make our lives about reacting to someone else's agenda. Because a force is not a force until something comes up against it. Right? That's a great thing to realize. Pain pushes until vision pulls. A force is not a force unless we're coming up against it in our mindset. Let's put forth our own vision. Now is the time when we're being called to articulate and talk about and dream into a vision. And then to be flexible, like to allow ourselves to see that we have two faces like Bridget does. You know, we have our shadow and our light. And to be flexible when the arrows come at us, when onslaught of judgments or difficulties come at us. I often think about Neo in the Matrix. Remember how he could shape shift like this? And nothing could really hit him. So that's kind of like Aikido master to the tenth power. You know, He is able to, the arrows don't hit him. And he is able then to become victorious. And Bridget is called the great victorious one. That's another one of her names. Victory comes to those who know how to yield, to become like water. To be very fluid. I think that's why she's the goddess of the waters and the goddess of the flame. There are many who share visions of a better world. They might come in a red cloak. They might come in a blue cloak. They might come in a Muslim form or a black face or a white face. Or They might even come in the traumatized heart of a white supremacist person, a vision for a better world. I don't know. But we've got to be looking everywhere. We've got to be looking in all the eyes for the glimpse of the maiden, for the glimpse of the vulnerable one that we can join with and invite and maybe walk a mile with. Take a deep breath, if you will, with me and close your eyes. <coughs> I'd like to take you into a, <clears throat> a walk to Kildare, a meeting with Bridget. Take a long, slow, deep breath and feel yourself relaxing, your shoulders relaxing a little bit more. Remember the image of Bridget holding the flames in her hands the young maidens of such beauty and vision, holding these two flames in her hands. Breathe deeply through your nose and slowly exhale through your mouth three times. In, out through your mouth. And now we're going to 
do it a few more times a little bit faster because this is called the breath of flame, the breath of fire. Feel yourself heating up a little bit and relaxing at the same time. Feel your muscles relaxing as the flame ignites. Feel the water and the flame. One more long, slow, deep breath. Oh, and imagine your feet on the earth turning into stone right now. Let your feet feel as heavy as granite. Imagine your ankles turning into stone right now. And your legs starting to feel like great rocks sitting softly on the earth. Your hips, too, turning into stone. The stone moves up your body and helps you feel settled. The weight of your body turning to stone. Feel it settle you. Let it all go. The weight of your body no longer tugging at you. You're just giving over to it. Your arms turning to stone, too. Falling branches on the earth. Everything falling, falling, falling. Your shoulders, your neck, your head relaxing, turning to stone. And you realize you are one with the stone, with the great standing stone of the goddess, solid. There is only peace and darkness. You, the stone, the sovereign stone of the goddess. The darkness surrounds you seems to go forward ahead of you. There's a depth that you're being called to reach out to in the darkness. You touch it with your mind and the darkness seems to clear. Things begin to focus. You squint your eyes and you find yourself in a snow-covered forest. You feel the cold of the winter. The trees are bedecked with icicles. There's not even a sound wave of your own breath. It's still, so still. There's no wind. The heavy air seems to have frozen. And you stand up into your human body and you look around and you don't see any sign of where you came from or where you're going. You walk ahead. The only footprints are the ones you're making as the snow crunches beneath your feet. You reach down and pick up a powdery handful of snow. It melts in your hand and it feels slightly cold. You drop the snow and brush it off. Brush it off with your hands and brush the snow off your legs. Then you look up and the sky is overcast in a soft gray. It seems to be getting on toward dusk. And then all of a sudden you see a path in the snow a few yards ahead. No footprints, just a, just a deep path there and you make your way towards it. It's not much wider than a deer trail, but it's better than stumbling over the rocks and logs hidden in the snow. And as you walk along the path, you notice this odd silence deepening around you. The sky seems to have gotten a bit darker, and you walk more quickly down the path. Low stones seem to be placed at the sides of the path, and they grow in size as the path winds along with larger and larger rocks until you finally reach a huge stone outcropping that surrounds the path on both sides. It's higher and higher until it reaches far, far over your head, these giant rocks with blue-green icicles hanging off of their edges. It's like a frozen waterfall, these rocks. And as you stop to admire it, you have this odd feeling that you, are being watched. You listen. You listen deeply, but you don't hear anything. Off in the distance, though, you could have sworn that you heard a tinkling, like chimes blowing in the wind. And you say to yourself, maybe I'm imagining things. And you move onward through these great rocks, down a hill, and the path zigzags along a dry riverbed. And at its bottom, there's a boulder placed on five stones. And you 
you notice that there's no snow covering its top. And on top of it is what looks like a small flame, like a candle. You're startled when it lifts up and moves in midair. And this flame comes towards you and hovers. And every time you move, it moves. It moves with you and stays just out of reach, this flame. It then moves to an embankment and dances over the embankment as if it's beckoning you. So you follow and you jump over the embankment too. You climb over it and you peer over the edge and you see a vast forest. The tree, trees seem to be as ancient as they are large. Their bark is gnarled and they look like giants reaching up to the sky. The flame grabs your attention again as it flits over a sunken path in the snow. It picks up its pace and you've got to move more quickly. And it seems to change colors to just a very soft yellow. But it's grown in size. It's just a small flame, but it's very large now, maybe a foot high. And you're following it into this immense briar patch of trees. Then the flame suddenly bursts forth like a blossom. And then it fades before your eyes. And you reach out into the air where it was and it actually feels very warm. But here you are in this lonely forest. And you're trying to make your way, but there are those spurs reaching out and grabbing your clothing and you're wondering if you're really supposed to make it anywhere through this tangle. Why did you come? What's going on? It's just dark now. The light's gone. <laughs> but you've still got a curiosity. The snow starts to fall from its branches as you push your way through. You have to wipe the snow from your face. And then you wonder if you're dreaming it. But as you look through one blade of trees, you see a being dressed in white, all in white. Her hair is long and as red as the sunset. Small fires like the one that led you here hover above you in a circle around the briars. And these small flames, they're like little berries shining like, like dark purple garnets or something. They're, they're dark flames that play across the exquisite features of this being. And she's just standing there with her head down, humming to herself. And then she kneels down and you notice that there's a frozen pond there. <coughs> frozen pond, all so familiar to how we feel sometimes, <coughs> a frozen pond covering over our passions, our hearts, but this beautiful figure in white reaches out her hand onto the frozen pond, and as she reaches out to touch it, it melts at her touch, Ooh. and then she turns and looks directly at you, her green eyes are deep, and they hold your full attention so well that you hardly notice her speaking to you. Oh, nobly born one, I have been waiting for you. Not too many make it this far. Thank you so much for coming. You must be so tired and thirsty after your long travels. Here, sit beside me and have a drink. She has a goblet by her side, a beautiful goblet, and she dips into the water, puts it in the goblet, and offers it to you and says, go ahead. This water from the springs will refresh your life. You feel your legs heavy from the long walk, but you feel a warm glow running through your body as all your senses do feel alive and, and sharpened by this drink of living water. She says, hush, hush, don't speak. Don't even have to say thank you. I know why you are here, even though you don't know it yet. You did very well, my child. You bristle at the world, child. She smiles. You're all children to me. Newborn buds on a great oak and songbirds in the sky. I've been here long, long before you could ever be. I am the bride. I am Brigitte. I am the light. Do you even yet know who you are? Humanity, do you know who you are? She 
seems to notice your confused look and then she points to the pond. Look into the water and see both of your reflections. See both of your reflections, your two-faced reflections. Through me, you see your true self. Realize dreams that have not even come into fruition yet. Songs that you haven't even sung yet. All of the arts that are mine as they're threading to be spun through you. It's your weave and I am the fire of your inspiration. Look at me through my eyes and I shall never be very far away from you. I'm closer than your own heart. And then look into the other face, the face of the other in the pond that is your face too. In any other that you perceive as your face too. As you stand there, you feel yourself being laid bare. As she looks at you, her green eyes penetrating to your very essence. Being seen. Being seen and known, you know yourself. And you hear her voice speaking to you again. Brave one, she says to you, it's time for us to part now. But I want to leave you with a gift. She affectionately reaches out and places her hand on your heart. And with a tear in her eyes, she whispers, do well. Do well. You find yourself in the darkness again, the darkness of the forest. And then the light, the soft yellow light appears. And you walk your way out, out of the forest. And now the path feels very familiar. And you walk your way all the way back into your bodily presence right here in this room your legs and your hands and your arms a little bit away from yourself, feeling the gift that you've received in your heart. It is with you. This is not the end of the journey. It's only the beginning. Allow this gift that you receive to deepen in you. Some beautiful songs and chants. We'll be chanting a prayer in Hebrew. Ana, Elna, Refa, Nala. And it's said that um, Moses said this prayer when his sister Miriam contracted leprosy. And, um, Apparently Miriam is the sister who kind of hid Moses away by the river when all Hebrew children were ordered to be murdered. So she saved him. Um, and I have also heard that this particular tune we'll be singing um, came from, I believe, Arye Hirschfeld, who founded the Havara here. Um, that's what I've heard. So, Anna Elna Refa Nala, basically meaning, God, please God, heal her. So you may, um, as you sing this, think of her as our nation, you know, as, as any, any forgotten spirit of Bridget or any frozenness or fear or brokenness, just bringing that healing in through the prayer. And then we'll go into a very short version of one that you'll recognize.
spirit of Bridget, we thank you for being with us today, for reminding us about who you are, for igniting that flame of memory in us of who we are. We're humbled and honored to be humans alive now on this earth at this time. We feel our ancestors in our bones, down to our bones. And we feel those that come after us in the light of our eyes. Help us to do well. Do well. And all will be well. Let's say that one more time. And all will be well. So it is. You may be seated. Now is the time for us to take our offering, and we thank you so much for giving generously to support the work of this, this unity at Ashland and um, being here in this beautiful space. We just thank you for all that you give. And take the offering now. After the offering, usually we close in a big circle and sing a closing song together. But today we're going to close by having you come up in this circle up here and we'll move things back. And we conclude with a, a chant and movement, prayer and movement that you've done many times before if you've been coming here for a while, but it's from the Arabic tradition. And it's a wonderful way of ending both to honor the Muslim people, Muslim faith, and to feel our bodies, really feel our, our bodies igniting passion. Heather, what are the words to the... Well, before we do the words, after we bless the offering, just to kind of give you an idea of how we're going to organize ourselves, is there's going to be two circles. And it doesn't matter if it's exact numbers, but there'll be an outer circle of about half of us, and then an inner circle. So two circles, one inside the other, and then from there I'll step you through the movements which are, are pretty simple. It's a healing chant, it's Ya Shafi, Ya Kafi. Ya Shafi, let's just say that. Ya Shafi. So the shh, just imagine that kind of whooshing up to the heavens, the above. And then Ya Kafi, say that. Ya Kafi. The hardness of the k feeling it through your body and connecting down low to the earth. So some of the movements will reflect that. Ya Shafi, hands up. Ya Kafi, hands down. And the outer circle will be moving clockwise, inner circle counterclockwise. Um, and the other part of the chant is, let me do thy will, Allah. Allah, Allah, let me do thy will, Allah. So the Arabic words, um, Allah, you know, God, the word for God, Allah. Um, one. Yeah. And I thought it would be good to do this one, especially with everything that's going on in the Muslim community. So let's bless the offering, and then if you can help us by kind of moving the chairs out of the way, I don't know how it will be done, but I know we can. We've got a pretty big space up here, but the front two rows like we pushed back a little bit still. So let's bless our offering. What we do is we rub our hands together to feel our, you know, fire chi energy that is an energy of blessing and we send this blessing to the money that's in these bags and we say this prayer knowing that it, it affects the, the offering we say divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am all that I give and all that I receive all that I stare over I don't know it anymore. I don't know it either. <laughs> it's been a hundred years. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you. That's all it is. Thank you, everybody. So let's come forward and, you know, if anybody doesn't want to stand and do it, please feel welcome to sit and observe. Yeah, but I'd love for all of you, yeah. please, kind of be involved if, in it. If you're not participating, it's probably best to be, like, on the outer, like, on the couch or the outer chairs. So we'll need two circles, and then I'll tell you where we're going to go. <laughs> 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 
begins the traffic. It's just those first two rows that need to be pushed together more. Just kind of look around and have about the same amount of people in the center circle and the outer circle. It doesn't matter if it's not like that. And it helps to kind of hold the ends to form the circle, so I'll be in the outer circle. I see an inner circle already formed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
above. And then bringing it through our bodies, through our hearts, bringing the blessing to earth. Through us. And then bringing our hands to our hearts in a prayer form. Spirit, Spirit of the Great Ones, like Bridget, those who have come to help us on planet Earth, we thank you so much that we are one with you, that we have your guidance, that we have it in our deepest selves of our being, and that we have your vision of what this planet is evolving toward, what humanity and all sentient beings are, are moving toward. We have that vision within us, that fire is alive in us. I'm so thankful for being together to remind one another of what this is all about. I'm so thankful for community. And we go out from this place knowing that we are better for having been here and come together with one another. And so it is. It's blessed we Blessed we Many blessings. Blessings to our Muslim Please join us for refreshments and conversation in the back. Glad you're here.